My name is Mohir Banna, Professor of General Surgery, Anshams Medical School. The title of this lecture is Hemorrhage and Shock. By the end of this lecture, you should be able to outline the definition and types of shock, mention the causes of shock, discuss the pathophysiology of shock, explain the clinical picture of shock, recognize and explain management of the shocked patient, and apply acquired knowledge on virtual case scenarios and clinical situations. Shock is insufficient tissue perfusion. It can proceed to irreversible organ damage. Hypoxia in the shocked patient compounds the problem of cellular oxygen delivery. There are several mechanisms of shock. We have hypovolemic shock, which is inadequate total body volume, cardiogenic shock, which is due to failure of the pump function of the heart. We have septic shock, which is due to microvascular changes and cardiac depression caused by systemic inflammation, anaphylactic shock due to acute hypersensitivity reaction to an allergen. The classical symptoms and signs of shock include tachycardia with rapid weak pulse, hypotension, tachycardia, cold clammy skin, oliguria, mental changes, most commonly anxiety, confusion, and combativeness. Investigations reveal metabolic acidosis, low oxygen saturation, and low central venous pressure. The main causes of hypovolemic shock are blood loss or fluid loss, which may be in the form of revealed hemorrhage or concealed hemorrhage. Revealed hemorrhage, for example, hematemesis, continued loss from a wound drain indicating internal bleeding. Concealed hemorrhage, for example, intra-abdominal bleeding, GI bleeding, or intramuscular blood loss from fractures. Septic shock is the relative hypovolemia due to inappropriate expansion of the circulation relative to blood volume. There is failure of normal peripheral resistance and or venodilatation of large veins. Septic shock is a combination of distributive shock and organ dysfunction induced by mediators of the host inflammatory response and sometimes directly by bacterial toxins. Cardiogenic shock is a drastic reduction in cardiac output resulting from any form of pump failure. Causes include direct myocardial damage, mechanical abnormality, or malfunction of the heart. This most commonly arises from acute myocardial infarction or acute ventricular arrhythmia. Secondary cardiac failure occurs when there is a large pulmonary embolus that obstructs blood flow through the lungs. Other causes include cardiac tamponade and tension pneumothorax. Anaphylactic shock is a generalized form of type 1 hypersensitivity reaction in which the stimulatory antigen binds with antibodies attached to the surface of mast cells, triggering release of histamine and other vaso vasoactive amines, causing extensive dilatation of the venous compartment and rapid movement of fluid into the tissues. The systemic effects are compounded by hypoxia due to bronchoconstriction and laryngeal edema. In surgical practice, anaphylactic shock usually results from drug administration, particularly via the intravenous route. Antibiotics, particularly penicillin, and radiological contrast are the most common causes. Anaphylactic reactions may also occur after intravenous injections of radiological contrast media. Insect bites and ingested nuts are also important causes and may be encountered in the emergency department. The clinical picture is a cold, pale, clammy, hypotensive patient with a rapid thready pulse and increased respiratory rate. The skin is cold and clammy. Tachycardia is increased heart rate, hypotensive due to reduced blood pressure. And when we check the respiration of the patient, he has tachypnea, increased, increased respiratory rate. Septic shock, however, presents with a contrasting clinical picture. Cytokine-mediated peripheral vasodilation is unresponsive to circulating catecholamines. The patient's skin is flushed and hot. Cardiac output is increased to fill the dilated periphery. The pulse is typically bounding in quality. Temperature may be above normal or below normal, what we call cold sepsis. In all forms of shock, the main organ systems without treatment will fail. Pulmonary failure leads to acute respiratory distress syndrome, 
ARDS. Cerebra cerebral hypoxia and ischemia soon causes confusion and eventually coma. Inadequate renal perfusion causes oliguria, which may progress to acute tubular necrosis and renal failure. If shock persists, reduced coronary blood flow and heart failure causes death. In septic shock, organ damage is exacerbated by an intense inflammatory burst. Treatment of shock. Hypovolemic shock is treated by stopping fluid and blood loss and replacing the loss. Fluid replacement should be equivalent to estimated fluid loss, but adjusted according to the response of pulse rate, blood pressure, observed central venous pressure or jugular venous pressure and urine output. Cardiogenic shock and fluid overload. Cardiogenic shock management is for internal medicine to explain. Fluid overload is a significant hazard in cases of cardiogenic shock. The treatment of septic shock is urgent and involves fluid resuscitation, oxygenation, administration of appropriate antibiotics, tracing and elimination of the source of infection, blood cultures, intravenous broad spectrum antibiotics. Medications in shock. The addition of inotropes to induce peripheral vasoconstriction may be required. Corticosteroids are known to stabilize cell membranes and low dose administration improves outcome in patients with refractory shock. Surgery in the shocked patient. In septic shock resuscitation should result in improvement in the patient's condition within one to two hours. By that time, the patient should be ready for immediate operation if an abscess, bowel perforation, or other surgical cause needs treatment. The source of infection must be urgently eliminated to reverse the septic ca cascade. Disseminated intravascular coagulation is a major problem in sepsis as there is generalized activation of the clotting cascade causing disseminated intravascular coagulation. DIC consumes platelets and clotting factors 5, 8, and fibrinogen, consumption coagulopathy, and activates intrinsic fibrinolytic mechanisms. DIC manifests as a spontaneous bleeding or bruising and uncontrollable hemorrhage from operation sites. Diagnosis is made by finding low fibrinogen levels and high levels of D-dimers that provide evidence of fibrin lysis. Treatment includes managing the initiating cause, giving intravenous heparin to arrest the coagulation process, and transfusing appropriate clotting factors, for example, fresh frozen plasma or cryoprecipitate. In cases of anaphylactic shock, we need to secure the airway and give oxygen. Lay the patient flat and raise the feet and administer 500 mg intramuscular adrenaline, that's 0.3 ml of 1 in 1000 solution. This dose may be repeated at 5 minute intervals if necessary. An antihistamine is given by slow intravenous injection and continued for up to 48 hours. Hydrocortisone 100 to 300 milligrams should also be given intravenously to block histamine receptors. Intravenous fluids may also be needed to treat hypovolemia. Please be ready with your questions in the next face-to-face -face session.